Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to your JavaScript tutorial series. This is essentially going to be the hands-on follow-up to the previous video or the, the previous three videos, which were all about functions. Now we're going to be practicing with some functions, getting a little bit more experience. So just follow along, we're going to create a function and just talk about it. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a power function. I may have showed this in an earlier video, so if that's the case, just uh, copy that code or just type out what I'm typing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a total and we're just going to increase that as the, the loop goes on. So inside the loop, we'll have a, an iterator, let i be zero, and we'll go until i is less than y, which is what we're going to raise x to. And then we'll say i plus plus. And then inside of here, all we have to do is we need to increase the total. And how much are we going to increase it by? Well, we're just going to multiply it once by whatever this number is. So let's say we're raising three to the third power. We're going to multiply total by three, three times, which will give us the, the correct value, which I think would be 27. <laughs> so then once we're done, all we have to do is return the total. And then outside of here, we can give it a test. We'll say console.log and we'll say power raise three to the third power. And I'm going to wrap all of this code inside of curly braces. Tab that over. And there we go, we should be good to go. Now let's run this, give it a try, and you can see the result is 27. So it appears our function pow is working correctly. Now we have two distinct parts here. We have the function declaration and the function invocation. So here we're declaring the function, and here we are invoking the function right inside this console log. It returns a number, that number gets passed to this console log, and it's outputted to the screen. That's how the workflow works. The parameters are the X and the Y. The arguments are the three and the three. So, so you know there's a difference between parameters and arguments. Parameters are the variables that hold what we pass in and the things we pass in are known as the arguments. You can create a function like this, but you can also assign this function to a variable. So if you wanted to do that, we just need to change this by prefixing it with something like let my func and then assign it what we just typed out. Now, instead of referring to it by pow, we would refer to it by my func, like so. Refresh, uh, my func is not defined. That's because I need to capitalize the F here. Do a refresh, 27. Now, in this situation, we're giving it a name here, but this is actually unnecessary because we're giving it a name here. So what we can do is we can just get rid of that, do a refresh, and it's still 27. So it seems like there's lots of different ways we can create this function, so how are we supposed to know which one we want to do? Well, this is known as a function expression versus a function declaration, which we just showed where we didn't assign it to a variable. So if you're assigning it to a variable, it's known as a function expression. And we're gonna talk about the difference between these two. 